Welcome everyone, I'm Jason and I'm going to show you a quick overview of the swatches panel in Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have your swatches panel up, go to the window menu and choose swatches. This is the swatches panel here. You're going to see it in a little bit different way simply because of the default when you open it up. You can view this in a list view or a grid or a thumbnail view and this is normally how the default is. If you like a list view, click on the list or the thumbnail. To control the size of the list or the size of the thumbnail, click on your swatches drop-down menu and choose the view size that you'd like of your standard color set. This default color set is here as a standard and we can change the swatch libraries here, which we will show you in another video, but you can very easily create new swatches from the swatches panel. Easy way, go to the Swatches drop-down menu, create new swatch. From the new swatch drop-down menu, you are going to be able to choose your different color modes, grayscale, RGB, CMYK. I'm gonna leave it on CMYK. You slide your sliders back and forth to create the color that you'd like. And when you're done, simply click OK, and it's going to add it in your swatches panel here at the end. Now, if I select one of my objects on the page, and I apply that color, that color gets applied, and I have use of it because it's sitting in my swatches panel. I can also click the plus down at the bottom of my swatches panel, and that's also going to bring up the new swatch panel. Every swatch that I create, and I click OK, will automatically add it into my swatches panel. Some people like to use the color picker, which is at the bottom of the toolbar. I've selected my shape, there's my color picker, and I would like to choose a new color, not by using my sliders, but by double clicking on my color picker. People like this because it's a really nice visual of seeing the entire color spectrum, as well as being able to go in and control the brightness and the darkness of those particular colors. Now, once I go in and I choose a color that I'd like to apply, and I click OK, that color is only gonna be applied to my object. It does not go into my swatches panel. One of the issues with that is, is that if I wanna use this color again, it's only existing here in my document, here in this object. So if I select this object, go to my swatches dropdown, and choose add selected colors, it will automatically add that selected color into my swatch panel for future use. So if I then like to color anything else, I don't have to go back to my color picker and remember that number or the build of that color. I can simply go in and click on it right there. Now, a short access to the swatches panel is also here in your control bar. If you don't have your control bar active, you can always go into the window and choose control. Here is going to be an exact replica of your swatches panel. Everything that you do here is mirrored in your swatches panel here. It's just a different place for the exact same swatch panel. So you can also go in and use all of your shortcuts and all of your menu items right from here. This is for the fill of my objects. This is going to be for the stroke of my objects. So just a duplicate of those swatches panel. Now one interesting thing, if you do go in and create a new color swatch, you can choose what color you'd like. And one of the options we have is to add this to my library. Now the library here is the Creative Cloud Library that allows you to create this color swatch, and this gets put into your Creative Cloud Library panel, which is then accessible in all the Adobe applications that have the Creative Cloud Library. What this does is when I'm working on a big project, I can take this color directly from Illustrator, and I can put it into any one of my libraries here, and then I can use this in Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign, any place else without having to go in and find out the color build of this color. So super helpful, but this is just a really quick overview on the swatches panel to be able to go in and create colors, modify the colors. Now, if I would like to edit a color, editing a color is very simple. If I go to my swatch panel and I double click on the color, I will be able to edit this color. And when I edit this color, I will change that color and every place where that color has been applied is now changed. 
super nice. But this only works with global colors. Global colors have this little angle on the right hand side. And we're going to talk about global colors here because this is something really important. To edit any of your existing colors here in your swatches panel, simply double click on the swatch and you can change or edit that color to anything that you'd like. Once you click OK, it will go ahead and change that color. Quite easy. Now you'll notice in the swatches panel here we have colors that have this little angle on the right hand side. These are global colors. One of the advantages of global colors is that when you double click on a global color and you change that global color, it is going to change it everywhere where that color is used in your entire document, fill or stroke. Now this only works with a global color and this is very important because when you get into working with a large Illustrator document, making all your colors global are going to be very, very important. When you start off, none of these colors here in the default panel are global colors. So what are global colors and how do we create them? Well, check out my video on global colors because it is extremely important. If you have not been using global colors or don't understand them, this will definitely change the way you use Illustrator.